Who the Sun Sets Free is free indeed. And we are so glad that you're joining us on Hope Today on this wonderful Monday. And Juneteenth, I'm here with Tom Hollis and Amanda. And Tom, we are going to talk about some powerful ministry that's happening. We are. You know, we all crave adventure. We do. I mean, look at all the superhero movies and the stories that we all loved as kids and as adults. What about an adventure with Jesus? What about doing something that is an adventure in ministry and an adventure with our children and grandchildren? We're all thinking about how are the ways that we can uh, see our children and grandchildren come to follow Christ and to seek that adventure. Well, Doug and Deb Tunney are going to be with us. Deb has written a book and uh, she is going to be sharing with us about that legacy of faith and what it means to really pass on, Amanda, that truth of, of Christ into that next generation. Amen. I'm so excited that our family is a recipient of the YWAM ministry that yeah. they're a part of and our Caleb that I know I talked about last week that's just growing with God and he's utilizing those skills that he learned from YWAM, Youth with a Mission, even in the Air Force. And it has been just amazing and beautiful for me as a parent to watch your child, you know, child and children flourishing in the things of God in this dark world. Yeah. Yeah. It's like beautiful to see how like children, when they grab hold of the gospel and with Jesus. And you know, one thing we do want to mention today, it is Juneteenth and there's celebrations all across the country and here, even in Pittsburgh, you know, Juneteenth is a celebration when the slaves in Texas, they found out that they are free. So it's the whole principle that, you know, we are all free. We are all one in this together. And speaking about being all together, I had a wonderful time in the city of Pittsburgh last night. There was probably many of you downtown watching and listening to Erica Campbell from Mary Mary. So it was awesome at the end of the night last night. We People were like worshiping, praising That's Jesus, sweet. and the kids were like running around and dancing. Oh, I just awesome. love that. Like, I think it's a little taste of heaven we had last night of yeah. just worshiping Jesus <laughs> in the city. It was a beautiful night. So, and I know there's fireworks today. And so wherever you are, if you're in Alabama and you're in Florida, wherever you're watching from, we're just so grateful that you are with us today. And I just think it's such a joy. I love when just seeing the body of Christ come together, but especially just this next generation to be set free and on fire well, for know, God. This is, yeah. this is really a spiritual principle. When you think about Juneteenth, the slaves were free. They didn't know they were free. The, 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 the word hadn't reached them in Texas that they were free. And this is like a year and a half after the end of the Civil War. And they, when they finally received that news, then there was this, hey, we're free. We're, yeah. And you know, a lot of times in Christ, we don't realize that we're free, yes. that we have been set free in Christ Amen. and we still have the trappings and the things of the world on us. You know, if you feel like that today, God wants you to know that you are free. You're going to hear a lot about uh, what it means to follow Christ, but freedom is the beginning of it. And if you need that freedom today, if you need to know who you are in Christ, you can call our prayer line, you can get a hold of a prayer partner and have someone pray with you to pray into that, walking in that freedom. Amen. It's so good. And I'm really excited for this interview that's coming up to even hear how in a big way. And I know Cornerstone's a big supporter of Doug Tunney and the mission of YWAM. So you are not going to want to miss one second of this interview. You might even want to call someone up who has teenagers because this is something that they can go and participate. I know Caleb, my son, went through the five-month program. Yeah, the and so they disciple them yeah. for yeah. three months. It was his particular program program and then he went on the mission field for two months in Belize. So they put into practice the things that they're learning from God's word yeah. and that is making disciples. And so, and I'm seeing the fruit of it. So you're not going to want to miss this. And I know you're going to want to share this with a neighbor. So please stay tuned, maybe get your pen and paper or call someone, but we'll be right back after this. Sid, I love your Cornerstone Television t-shirt. Where'd you get it? I am so glad that you asked. You know, this is an exclusive offer for the month of June for you to receive this one-of-a-kind CTVN t-shirt. You can support and sport your favorite Christian television network this summer when you go to barbecues, hanging out with family, and having tons of fun. Oh man, that is so much fun. And speaking of Cornerstone Television, I love their programming, especially that Hope Today show. Yes, we love Hope Today and all of the programs. And you know, with your best gift, request your Cornerstone 
Intelligent Network t-shirt when you give this month. We have sizes from extra small to 6XL. It is 100% cotton. It is quality and we want you to have this on you today. That's right, we have one for everyone and you get to represent the station you love with your own logo t-shirt. You'll enjoy this wearable reminder that hope happens here as together we spread the love of Jesus every day. You know, we cannot do it without you. When you give, you help us to impact Pittsburgh and beyond, reaching those of all nations and generations because we know people need to know the hope and the love of Jesus like never before. So why don't you give us a call at 888-665-4483 and request your very own Cornerstone TV t-shirt. That's right, you can also give online at ctvn.org slash donate. We would love to see you out in public somewhere wearing this t-shirt, maybe we'll have ours on too. Thanks for supporting us. Our next guests make it their mission to know God and make him known. Doug and Deb Tunney are the founders of Youth with a Mission Philadelphia and a few other places too. And they are extremely dedicated to presenting the gospel of Jesus to this generation. Mm -hmm. Deb is also an author and has a new book out called A Legacy of Faith, Our God Stories from Family, Missions, and Ministry. Doug and Deb, it's so good to have you guys here. Yeah, it's good Thank to be you. here. Yeah. I gotta start off, Sydney, by if I was gonna name like 10 people, five people that have affected my life. This couple right here is uh, are in that group because you guys challenged me and my family from an early age to follow after God. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank yeah, you. It's a privilege, right? <laughs> Our privilege. Yes. Well, let me ask you, Deb. So you, you wrote this book. I know it was a chore. It, oh, was, a, man. it was a battle. It was years, right? It was years. <laughs> but there's, it's 50 years of ministry there, yeah. and it's not stopped. It's not like no. you're just sitting there. So tell me about why write this book now. I mean, why put these stories together? Yeah. So our son just took over a ministry in Boston. Yeah. And we looked at each other and went, okay, what's the next assignment? What do we do? We don't know. And we thought we always sit with our grandkids and tell them stories. Yeah. In fact, just yesterday, Doug gathered our grandkids around on Father's Day and said, I want to tell you another story. And they went, well, we heard this before you went, I'm telling it again. And so we wanted to capture the life that we've lived for them. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, okay, what do we want to do? So we just randomly went, we said, okay, we want to miss this. We don't want to miss this. We wrote 456 things that we wanted to capture maybe and not lose. Mm -hmm. And at the end I said, okay, we're going to write a book. And so we began, not all those made it in the book. But That'd be all a big those, book. It'd be, oh, it'd well, it's like pretty big <laughs> anyway. Right? But all of those were some things, touches from God, things that we thought, wow, there's no other explanation, but there's a God who is real in our lives. And so we wanted to leave a legacy for our kids for that. Uh, what a tremendous legacy, awesome. too. And I know you guys have five kids and like 20 grandkids. Is that what it is? 16 grandkids. 16 grandkids. 16 grandkids. 16 grandkids. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. Well, Doug, let me ask you. So why, why be in ministry? I mean, from the <laughs> earliest time that I've known you guys, you were about sharing the gospel with people. Yeah. And, and that hasn't changed. A lot of, a lot of people, in their, when they're in their teen years or 20s, they might do that. But it's always been the forefront, why? I think because I was a lost person. Um, I was an alcoholic, I was planning to kill men. I had all these issues. And uh, one of my fellow students came up to me on my college campus in California, Pennsylvania, and openly shared the gospel with me. And he was terrible at sharing the gospel. <laughs> About halfway the through, worst. I was like, this guy's bad. But then he looked at me and through his eyes, I saw Jesus, I yes. saw love. I had never seen love like that in my life. And so just his eyes, just the love of Jesus pouring it affected me so much. And through that, he invited me to an InterVarsity Bible study. I went there and I found Christ. Uh, five weeks later, I got set free of alcoholism. Two months later, I forgave the man I was gonna kill and God set me free. And then I met this old missionary and he said, hey, Doug, why don't you go to Brazil with me? And I was like, I don't wanna go to Brazil. I don't wanna go anywhere. And so I said, I'd pray about it. And he laughed at me. I said, why are you laughing? He says, because the Bible says, go into all the world. It doesn't say pray about it. It says go. I said, oh, okay. I'm new at this. I didn't know this, you know? <laughs> and so I, I said, okay. So I went to Brazil and uh, went to Ubatuba, Brazil. 
place that never had the gospel before. We presented the gospel these people had never heard. And 700 of them came to Christ. And four years later, there were 30,000. And so we saw transformation. So I said, missionaries can make a difference in societies, in nations, in families, in lives. So now 51 years later, I'm still doing it. We were just in Brazil again. Did you go back to that same place again? In, in that area. In that yeah. area, yeah. And there was a DTS of 126 DTS students. Discipleship training. And they school. were crazy wild for Jesus. And I got to say, we were here before the revival began. We saw the first seeds of this revival. And now you're taking it to the nations. It's so exciting to see what God is doing. And they doing went there. over the world, that school. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So there you go. Just love hearing these stories of just how God is moving. Can you share another story in particular, especially with like children, how you've seen just the Holy Spirit break out and move? You know, I think in our own family, last year we had seven of our young people, our own grandkids say, I want to go with you. Our one granddaughter came from Kyrgyzstan all the way to be with us. She says, I want to be on the streets with you. And I think that that's like essential. When you think about an inheritance you're giving. It's not just like money or things you're giving. You're imparting the faith you have. And so for them to say, we want to be with you. We want to see how you do. We want to pray with you. We want to go hard with you. That for me is how we pass on our faith to the next generation. That's how we impart it to them. Let them be part of the journey with us, right? And I think that that is the most meaningful. Our little granddaughter last year, 12 years old, she's out in the middle of the, the hardest part of Philadelphia, and she's talking to this guy who is a little intimidating, the six foot guy. She's a little short girl. She's got a wordless book presenting the gospel to him. And I'm like watching her do that. I'm thinking she has faith and she's strong and she has imparted to her this uh, wild Jesus thing. That's what we want to see. And so we just found out she's somewhere else in the world today, just for this past week, doing translation for a team that's witnessing. So I want to see that, right? Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. how we do it. <clears throat> People will say to us, how do, you, how do you raise kids that are going to love God? I said, live it with them. Take them with you. Be a part of it with you and tell them your stories. Uh, you know, the, 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 in the book, you talk about that. You talk yeah. about that, that whole, I mean, adventure just jumps off the pages in this yeah. book. And I had heard a lot of these stories, but I hadn't heard all of them. I mean, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in a story here somewhere. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but the, the thing is, is um, God takes, I, think, I feel like God says, hey, I got a live one here. I got one that really wants to, to reach people. Yes. And he supports that person, doesn't he, Doug? I mean, he yeah. supports yeah. that person and gives them what they need. You yeah. know, I, I, I was so shocked about three days ago, I got a picture from Texas. My daughter lives down there and her son, Ethan, he's 17. He's one of the top celloists in Texas right now. He decided to train his group around him in evangelism and he took him on his own to a park to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I was like, that's heritage. That's yeah. heritage. That's what you want to see. You know, and the great failure of the American church is the fact that Christians out in the churches today don't go out on the streets to share their faith anymore. Mm -hmm. In Philadelphia, where I live, in 1965, 45% of the city was going to church. Today, 7% is going to church in Philadelphia. And we're seeing the results of it uh, becoming one of the murder capitals, you know. And so we got to get the church from the mm. seats to the streets, back to the people. And you know, when you go out, people are open. Yeah. They, they want to hear, they do. but nobody's out there telling them. The reason people aren't accepting Christ is because nobody's telling them. So we got to get the church people back out there. You know, I've lived in Philadelphia, so I have a very special so you know. heart. And so I understand, like I lived in North Philly and I lived in um, West Mount Airy, and I just know it is a very, even though it's called the city of brotherly love, you don't really, there's parts of that that you see, but yeah. there's a lot of strongholds. I mean, the yeah. opiate epidemic yeah. that's happening in Kensington. Yeah. Yeah. So can you just share with us that what you have been seeing and through the work that you're doing through your ministry, how you just see the gospel breaking out and breaking forth in some of the hardest places in the city? Yeah. Well, we had uh, this thing, the idea of uh, taking, the, how am I gonna get the people in the city out? So we have this thing called prayer stations. It's a mm -hmm. table you set up with a banner over top and it says prayer station. 
and you train people for like three hours. Then you go out and they stand behind this station. We have free Christian books, free hot chocolate or iced tea. And uh, the people come to you. Mm. The people come to you. And uh, we pray for them over 100 people every week. It's City Hall, you know City Hall. We go down to City Hall, we set up, and people are drawn to, to us all the time. And ladies will have the complete Muslim outfit on, and they'll come for the free Christian books, and we'll get to pray with them and lead them to the Lord. And it's just wonderful. And so now we've trained just in one church, 220 people have been trained in just from one church in Philadelphia. And now they said to me, I've been a part of this church for 37 years, but I never knew it was my responsibility to share the gospel. And you're saying, what are pastors telling people? What are they telling them? Let's get them out. So it's been wonderful. Since we got there in September of 2019, we've seen 3,800 come to Christ for the That's first awesome. time, just in that period of time. Let me, so, let me ask you that. I wanted to ask you because um, I heard a number a few years ago, and I know, you know, numbers, numbers are important. Jesus talked about numbers. Yeah. He talked about feeding the 5,000, feeding the 4,000. But we don't want to be evangelistic with these. And your son's kind of really drilled down. How many people have come to the Lord through your ministry over the years? Well, me and my sons have figured out over 300,000 have come yeah. to Christ. Wow, uh, fantastic. Through, through our lives, so. And a lot of been... other ones disciple. Now, Deb, I want to ask you about yeah. this book, about the story. Yeah. Because um, one thing my wife appreciated, see, the guys, we talk about one thing. The oh, wives, yeah. the wives have a different perspective, <laughs> oh, you know? I, mean, right. I just always joke about John Wesley's wife used to say, don't listen to that man up there and stuff like that. And Jean <laughs> goes, I understand that a lot better. <laughs> but tell me about the hard times. Tell me about the, 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 the things that uh, you didn't shy away from telling those stories. No, huh? Well, when I read the reviews that people wrote on Amazon, a lot of them say this was an honest conversation about ministry and family. And I really wanted to do that. I wanted to say, listen, um, we're not the Cleaver family. You know, we're not the like perfect family that nothing happened to. In ministry, hard things happen. In life, hard things happen. We had our senior pastor run away with the organist, you know. I mean, it's heartbreaking. We... You know, we actually got kicked out of our ministry at the beginning. And the same people who were part of that were the people who ushered us in and invited us to come start Wyoming Pittsburgh. So it is the redemptive part of the struggle in life and journey that's really important, that you don't give up. You, you know, when the hard times come and you don't know where your next, you know, uh, meal is going to come from, you can trust God that he is with you. He's developing you, he's growing you, and he, the hard time enables you to do the very thing that you were destined to do. And without the struggle, you're never gonna get there. Without the struggle, you're not gonna have authority to speak. So I wanted to write this, not for only, only for our own kids, but for this next generation of leaders. And I wanted to say to them, you're gonna face hard times, but you, are, you cannot be a victim you cannot feel entitled. You have to embrace the journey and the battle. God will strengthen you and he'll give you what you need. It's no accident. You've been dropped into history in this moment, the crazy moment we live in, and that God will prepare you to make a difference. We got to do it in, this, in the time in which we live. And I love how you just brought up the, this whole point of like just the struggle, because I think a lot yeah. of times it's very discouraging yeah. that I think a lot of times as we come to Jesus and we think it's going to be like, oh, kumbaya, everything's going to be happy. Oh, and then yeah. it's like, oh, hell is breaking loose like oh, yeah. all the time. It's like you have a target on your back. Well, what could you say and speak to the person right now that is even going through that and walking through that? What are the things, what are some of the values and takeaways that you've learned just through walking with that and seeing who yeah, God is? I can give you like a really short story. When we were pioneering Wyoming, Boston, it was so hard. We ran out of money. We had this big obstacle. It, we got kicked out of our building, and all of Wyoming, Boston was happening in our house right next door. And I just, I said, I just can't take this another day. It's like there are people around me. It's just like the pressure was so much. And uh, so I got in my car, and I just drove. I ended up in my daughter's place, which was four hours away. I had to pretend like I was just taking a drive through the park, you know. Hi, I'm here to visit. She went, okay, well, <laughs> clearly you're not here to visit. But I took a little mental health moment. I came back after a few days and I pulled in my parking lot and I looked in the picture window of my home and there were like 30 YWAMers in there. And I said, I just can't take this. This is too much. 
So I walked, it was raining, I walked in the rain, the rain was cascading over my glasses, and I walked up and I climbed up into a kid's, they had a little tree house there, all by myself. It was sort of a scene, you know, here I was in my 60s and in this tree house and my sweatshirt was totally soaked and the water was coming over me. And I said, I cannot do this another moment. And in that moment, God like brought back a refreshing to me and saying, you're an overcomer. You're called to this. You're going to make it. I'm with you. And I can't explain it. Like some like deep, wild um, energy, spiritual inspiration came. And I said, whatever it takes, I'm going to see this through. I don't care. God has met me. He's with me. He's going to do it. And I just felt like I was like throwing off all the negativity and saying, I'm going to persevere. And it was right after that. God released to us all the money. He, we got back in our building. And now this, this ministry is affecting thousands of people. Wow. Does that answer your question? That's oh. more than answer the question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, That's a fantastic story. answer yeah. to the question. And so we all need a treehouse moment, right? Uh, we do, yes. yes. I'm sure we, we've all had the times where we felt like that. So uh, I just want to, you know, just say that, again, you've, you've heard their stories, and I, I can't hi, more highly recommend a book than this one. So, uh, Dev and Doug, uh, the time is so short. There's a million other stories we could share. Thank you for all that you do, and thank you for being with us today. All right. All right. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Well, we're going to take a, a, just a head over to Amanda right now. She's got something important to share with you. I'm so thankful to hear the testimony from the Tunnies and what God is doing and especially discipling others. It's so important. But what Deborah was talking about, you know, that moment of weariness, I think we all go through that. And if we could go to God's word right now, let's go to Matthew 11 and it's verses 28 to 30. It says, then Jesus said to them, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle of heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. You know, it's so important when you think about Jesus's words when he says, come to me. It's the greatest invitation that we could ever receive. And I don't know, you know, where you're at in life, but sometimes I know even myself personally, I can be burning the candle at both ends and feel exhausted. But this is the Jesus that's saying to you, come to me. Or how about we're really good of feeding all the people around us and serving them. But how about ourselves? You know, this cry that God's asking of us, come to me and we don't have to be perfect just as Deborah said it's not about this pristine and perfect thing that happens when you become a believer but it's this humility that God develops within you our realization of how much we need him and this invitation isn't come unto me all those who have themselves put together but it's come unto me in your weakness in your burden because he desires to give you rest. So today, I wanna to extend that invitation to you. Number one, to those who maybe have never chosen Jesus as their Lord and Savior. He is commissioning to you to come to him. And will you do that today? Will you say yes today? Will you follow him today? If so, then I ask that you would say, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins, and I choose to make you Lord of my life. If you said those very simple words, this is the beginning of a life change for you. It's a beginning of letting God be the leader in your life. And we have prayer partners standing by. Please give us a call at our prayer line so we can further talk to you, send you some materials. And I just feel for those of you who maybe you are saved, but you are feeling the heat of just everything you're doing. Jesus says, come unto me. He really means it. He'll give you rest. It is so important that time that we sit with Jesus. So pause today. Just be with him. Thank you for being with us here on Hope Today. We're going to go back over to Tom and Sydney. Thanks, Amanda. You know, it's so important that we don't let this moment pass. Yeah. 
you've heard that word. It's such a simple prayer. You know, it's not magic words, but it's the commitment and the opening of your heart to Christ to say, come in, be my Lord and Savior. Doug, if someone does that, what's their next step? When they, when they come to the Lord like that, what should they do? You know, recently I, I did a study on what happens when somebody prays that prayer. The Bible says they pass from death to life. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And so this is a contract that God has made with man. You pray that prayer. You commit yourself to the Lord. And all of a sudden, he's going to do all these, all the inheritance, all the promises that God has made. You inherit them as his child. It's, there's thousands of promises once you pray that prayer. And then one verse I've been thinking about lately is all things work together for good. Before I knew the Lord, everything was bad. I'd get depressed, I'd get angry, I'd get in fights. Once I accepted Jesus, all of a sudden I look at my life, I say, man, even with nine years of malaria, it worked out that I could affect Liberia, West Africa in a tremendous way with a crusade of 50,000 people, you know, and it came through the malaria. So no matter what happens. And so once they pray that prayer, man, your life has changed. You're a brand new person in the Lord. You know, just as you were talking, like the one thing that God has just really spoken in my spirit, and I just read it over this weekend, just spending a really intimate time with the Lord, is there's a scripture, and it's in Isaiah 59, 19, believe. And it says, like, to come like a rushing stream. Yeah. A lot of times it's interpreted as like the enemy will come up like a flood. That's actually not what it says, but it's really talking about that God will come in like a rushing stream because of the spirit of the Lord. And we just declare and decree over you today that no matter what you're walking in, I just see an image that you may feel dirty. There's a lot of residue, but invite the rushing stream. Invite God to cleanse you, to clean you, to go into those deep places, to heal you and to go down deep, to break off those bondages, no matter what it may be, maybe addiction or hardship or whatever you are walking through. Allow the rushing stream to cleanse you, to come over you. Because you know when I think about when we take a shower, <laughs> how good it feels. And sometimes the rushing stream is a little tough and it's, whoo, it's strong. But there's a current that God wants to take you on. And when you give your life to Jesus, it is a wild ride, but it's a beautiful ride through the ups and the downs, the hills and the valleys. But can I tell you, friend, <laughs> there is no journey like it. So today, as you've been joining us and we've shared about these stories, about the power of the gospel, the power of his freedom, the power of deliverance. That's what God wants for you. And that's why he gave Jesus. He paid the ultimate price for you. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit enables us to walk, to listen, to be healed, and to be all we are called to be. So we thank you so much for joining us on this hope today. And today we just hope that you grab hold of that. We love you. Have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow.